Morning, Spark Sunday School. I am so glad to see you today. I have a story for us. Some people wanted to see Jesus. The disciples showed these people where Jesus was teaching. When a seed is planted in the ground, it dies so new plants can grow with many more seeds on it, Jesus said. Why was Jesus talking about a seed? He explained. It's time for God's promise to come true. I will die and come alive again. Many people will serve and follow me. The people asked Jesus how they could serve him. Follow me, said Jesus. I will show you how to help and care for others. Just then, a voice as loud as thunder said, it is time for me to keep my promise. Jesus told the people it was God speaking. God says, it's time to follow me. After Jesus finished teaching, some people began serving and helping others. They were following Jesus. Ha, ah, in our story today, Jesus was talking about following and serving God. You can see Jesus knew that he was sent by God to save the world. He knew he would have to die and rise again to save all of us. Jesus wanted us to know how to serve others. So he said, follow me. So we are supposed to follow his example that he showed us and taught us about through all the stories we've read in the Bible and that we hear at Sunday school. One of the ways to follow Jesus is by helping others. The people here at our church, St. Stephen, including you, are trying our best to follow Jesus' example, especially when it comes to feeding others. During the month of March and the season of Lent, we started collecting food for kids who don't have enough to eat on the weekends when they are not in school. You can help with this by bringing food to our church. We gather it all together and we pack up a bag so our friends will not be as hungry over the weekends. We also have helped to make over 60 casseroles to take downtown Des Moines where people can get a warm, hot breakfast because they are hungry. You see, Jesus told us it is our job to help and care for others. If people are hungry, we need to help feed them. If people are cold, we need to help offer shelter. If people are sad, we need to comfort them. If people are struggling with homework, we certainly need to help them. We can help Jesus by serving others. We, serve, we can serve God by sharing God's love for everyone in the whole world. 
God wants us to help. I can help and you can too. We can all help. Would you pray with me, please? Dear God, thank you for sending your son, Jesus, into our world. Help us to serve and follow you this week and always. Amen. I'll see you next week.
Good morning and welcome to worship with St. Stephen Lutheran Church. It's so good to be gathered to hear the word of God, share the Lord's Supper, and proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and deed. We gather today on the fifth Sunday in Lent, and this is the weekend where Jesus tells us what to expect when it comes to his life and his death. He uses the image of a seed planted in the ground to give us an idea of what he's talking about. And he also uh, speaks with conviction about the importance of this moment, uh, the purpose behind uh, the moment of his death and, uh, yes, resurrection. And so we'll hear that story as we worship today and begin to prepare uh, for Holy Week and Easter. Uh, Speaking of Holy Week and Easter, they're right around the corner. Next Sunday, uh, which is March 28th, is Palm Sunday, also known as Passion Sunday. Uh, That is the weekend when we commemorate and hear the story of Jesus' triumphant entry into Jerusalem. We also hear uh, the story of his death. That is the beginning of Holy Week, and it uh, begins uh, that walk with Jesus uh, with the cross uh, to Good Friday. Uh, There is uh, virtual worship on Maundy Thursday uh, at 6 o'clock and a virtual uh, service of Good Friday um, at 6 o'clock as well. So stay tuned uh, for those worship opportunities over the course of Holy Week. Not this week, but next week. On Easter Sunday, uh, we'll be gathering in person outside uh, in the parking lot and on the lawn. Uh, That's Sunday, April 4th at 10 o'clock in the morning. There will be a virtual service as well uh, for those who prefer to uh, worship virtually. Uh, But know uh, that we will have the opportunity to gather in person and sing and pray and give thanks for the resurrection of Jesus Christ on Easter Sunday, April 4th this year. I also want you to know uh, that our hope is to begin gathering in person the week after Easter. Uh, That would be on April 11th. We'll uh, gather uh, indoors uh, with uh, precautions in place. That means masks and social distancing. We'll also have uh, shorter 30-person services uh, limited to about 50 people. Uh, But uh, keep that in mind, that's April 11th. Uh, We're going to be dipping our toes into in-person worship on the weekends once more. Uh, So we look forward to that. Um, We look forward to seeing how God will uh, continue to draw us together. Uh, We are still in the season of Lent, however, and so a couple things to tell you about uh, with regard to that. The first uh, is that our casserole service project continues. The last day uh, to bring in a casserole is Wednesday, March 24th. Uh, That is this coming Wednesday, and so you will have been making these casseroles and freezing them in your own freezer, but the invitation to bring them to St. Stephen is this coming Wednesday on the 24th, and so keep that in mind as this week begins. Also remember, uh, we continue to receive food uh, for local elementary schools Backpack Buddies program. Uh, We'll take everything, but we're good on snacks. So just put the pause button on the snacky kinds of foods uh, this time around, but continue to uh, purchase and bring in all other kinds of foods. As you know, we are supplying uh, these bags, 50 a week until the end of the school year. That'll bring us till about June. And so your generosity uh, really makes this ministry happen. Uh, You've seen uh, the items going across the screen. Uh, Continue to purchase and drop them off here at St. Stephen, and our middle schoolers and high schoolers will be making sure that they're packed and ready to go where they need to go. So that ministry continues. Also, uh, know that this is the uh, last uh, Wednesday where we will be gathering for Holy Communion in Lent. That's at noon and at 5.15. And so if you'd like to gather on this final Wednesday, please do. As I mentioned before, we're going to be uh, worshiping in person on Sundays uh, going forward. And so uh, that'll take uh, the place of these Wednesday opportunities. Um, Of course, if you are a person who uh, thinks uh, Wednesday midday is still a wonderful time to worship, reach out. Let me know. Uh, We want to do what works for our congregation and community. And if that's working well for you, uh, please do let us know. Uh, This is a service of Holy Communion, a meal of grace and hope and a love for everyone who gathers to receive it. That includes each and every one of you. 
uh, later in the service, you'll be invited to uh, grab a bit of bread and a little bit of wine or grape juice uh, to be the body and blood of Christ in our midst. Uh, receiving Holy Communion, that holy sacrament is a gift of grace, and it is a moment where we receive the grace and love of God. And so it will be a real joy uh, to gather our hearts and minds together later in the service to receive that grace together. Before the service continues, though, I invite us all to pause for a moment, rest in the presence of the Holy Spirit, and take a nice deep breath. And with that, the service continues with confession. Let us confess our sins in the presence of God and of one another. Most holy and merciful God, we confess to you and to one another and before the whole company of heaven, that we have sinned by our fault, by our own fault, by our own most grievous fault in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not forgiven others as we have been forgiven. Have mercy on us, O oh God. We have shut our ears to your call to serve as Christ served us. We have not been true to the mind of Christ. We have grieved your Holy Spirit. Have mercy on us, O oh God. Our past unfaithfulness, the pride, envy, hypocrisy, and apathy that have infected our lives, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O oh God. Our self-indulgent appetites and ways and our exploitation of other people, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O oh God. Our negligence in prayer and worship and our failure to share the faith that is in us, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O oh God our neglect of human need and suffering, and our indifference to injustice and cruelty, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O oh God. Our false judgments, our uncharitable thoughts toward our neighbors, and our prejudice and contempt toward those who differ from us, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O oh God. Our waste and pollution of your creation and our lack of concern for those who come after us, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O God. Restore us, O God, and let your anger depart from us. Hear us, O God, for your mercy is great. service continues with song.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O oh God, with steadfast love, you draw us to yourself, and in mercy you receive our prayers. Strengthen us to bring forth the fruits of the Spirit, that through life and death we may live in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Now among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew, and then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, 
The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly, I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Now my soul is troubled, and what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. And then a voice came from heaven, I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said that it was thunder. Others said, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, this voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace to you and peace from God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. In my office here in the church, I have a wall that's covered in different scripture verses. Uh, And these scripture verses aren't from any one particular place. They're verses that have been particularly meaningful to me over the course of ministry. There are some verses that uh, came from my ordination, some that came from installation here at St. Stephen. There are still other verses that I simply picked up in a Bible study uh, with uh, adults or a youth group gathering or in my own uh, scripture reading. Uh, And all these verses are up on the wall, on little uh, pieces of eight and a half by 11 paper stuck up there. And uh, when my mind wanders in the middle of the day or when I'm looking for something to help kind of ground me in my situation or my task or whatever it is, I look up at that wall and usually, uh, maybe even every time, I'll be reminded by those verses of a sense of call, a sense of purpose, a sense of hope. Every once in a while, the two-sided tape on the back of those verses gives out. And it's on cardstock, and so the paper is a little bit heavier than uh, regular printer paper. But for whatever reason, the tape will give out, and the verse will fall to the floor. And I've taken a particular verse falling on the floor to be some sort of sign from God, a sign that says, this is a verse that you need to take an extra close look at right now. I just like that idea. I don't know if it's true or not, but, you know, there's a sign and I'm reading scripture and all the pieces seem to be fitting together pretty well uh, for that to be some intent of God's. And so I'll walk over and I'll pick up the passage and I'll read it and then I'll stick it back up on the wall right back where it was. There was a span of time a couple months ago uh, where the same passage kept on falling off the wall. And now I know what you're thinking, put more tape on the back of it, the same one won't fall down anymore, but haha, I did put more tape on it and it still kept falling down. And the passage was this one. Now my soul is troubled, and what should I say? Father, save me from this hour. No, it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. I think I put that passage up on the wall a year ago, or maybe two years ago, because it arrives in our readings uh, for the weekend at least once a year. And I think the first time I came across that passage, it was an encouragement to me to keep on going in the midst of struggle. Reminder to me that in the midst of challenges, in the midst of dangers, in the midst of some of the most difficult things, the intent was not for me to run away or hide, but to stay engaged and stay right there. Because it was for the purpose 
of serving in that moment that I was called. A reminder that for the difficult stuff, for the hard stuff, for the stuff that really grabbed my heart and really, really made me wrestle, it was that moment that the call came. Father, save me from this hour. No, it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. And I'll tell you, there have been challenges that we have undergone together where this particular passage has helped, has been an encouragement. You might remember a few years ago when um, a former intern pastor of ours, uh, Evan Cameron, had a very intense heart episode. It was real scary. It was real touch and go for a few moments there. Wasn't sure what we were supposed to do. Wasn't sure what to do next. Wasn't sure exactly how we were going to move on forget, uh, together. But there was this passage as a reminder to me, and I think to all of us, What are we to say? Father, save me from this hour. No, it is for this hour, for this reason that we have come to this hour. And sure enough, we answered, didn't we? We answered the challenge, cared for one another, cared for this one who was entrusted to us, and we carry on. There have been other challenges in the midst of congregational life, but of course, in the midst of personal life as well. If we've undergone tragedy or heartbreak in our immediate life, if we've had to engage in moments where people were just not seeing eye to eye or just did not understand the consequences of what was happening around them, those difficult moments where it might be easier to run away or hide, that's for this reason that we have come to this hour. And of course, at the beginning of this pandemic time, a year ago, a whole year ago and change from this past weekend, we might have wondered the exact same thing. Why do we have to deal with this? Why are we wrestling now with this? Things seemed to be going so well. Things were on a good trajectory. It seemed like everything was falling into place and now, this COVID-19 strikes. And if you're familiar with this passage, you might have been praying a similar prayer that I was, Father, save me from this hour. But then the next sentence comes right after. No, it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. For this reason that you and I were invited to be the church in this moment not as some test or some struggle or not God having it out for us, because, but because we were the ones here, ready, able, willing to endure. To put kindness for friend and neighbor ahead of our own uh, cares and our own preferences. To put generosity uh, toward others at the forefront of our lives. Courtesy care, love, and hope. All these things were planted within us and just waiting for the perfect time to erupt out of the soil and be realized in our life together. To be saved from this hour was not the purpose, but being planted here together so that we might rise and thrive and flourish in the midst of challenges. That was the dream of God, the hope of God, the will of God. We're coming out of a difficult time in the life of the church. The churches, of course, endured many things, but this has been a tough year all around the world for everyone. It has been challenging and difficult in innumerable ways. But we have hope, not only for what's to come and vaccines and continuing to care for one another uh, a little bit longer so that there isn't any more needless suffering or at least less of it, but also because we have hope and trust in a God who is with us through the most difficult moments, Jesus Christ. 
who has endured so much and invited us into his endurance through his baptism and through the cross. Jesus describes his death in terms of a seed planted in the ground. And I wonder if another image to use, not only for that seed of Jesus being planted in the ground in his death, is also the seed of Jesus being planted in each of us, ready to be nourished, ready to grow and flourish and be harvested season in and season out. I wonder if we are invited to experience Jesus planted within ourselves in the most difficult of moments so that we might be mindful of the hope that comes in Jesus Christ. The future with a hope and a promise and a purpose that is made real in Jesus' life and death and resurrection. The good news that is proclaimed through the new life of Jesus on Easter Sunday and every Sunday thereafter. It was through the challenge, through the difficulty, through what one might want to be saved from, that Jesus was saved for. Jesus walking into the challenges right in front of him, inviting us all to travel with him and to recognize the love of God and the life of God in our midst as we make our way through them. Even through death, death on a cross, through the tomb, through being buried, and then into new life. Challenges continue to befall us. They continue to pop up all around us. Whether it's week by week or day by day or hour by hour, there is nothing in all of creation that is going to rescue us from challenge happening. But what does rescue us from danger and from hopelessness is Jesus Christ, God with us. We are rescued and saved and carried through the most challenging moments with Christ and by Christ into new life. And so, remember, even as your soul may be troubled, we need not say, Father, save me from this hour because it is for this reason that you and I and Christ have come to this hour. To be mindful of God's love and grace and mercy and to see our way through with Jesus' help into the joy that is here and yet to come. Thanks be to God. Amen.
precious Lamb of God Who bore all my sin that I may live again The precious, precious, precious Lamb of God When I your heart my sins my sins tore us apart but I'm standing right here in the midst of your sins I claim you I claim you to be the Lamb of God now life life it can begin yeah truly free indeed I claim you I claim you to be the Lamb of God oh yes say it right now now behold the Lamb oh yeah behold that Lamb he precious he precious he was born in the sin Relying on the promises of God, we pray boldly for the church, the world, and all in need. Jesus calls us to follow him in life and death. Empower this congregation in discipleship. Give us your truth and wisdom and teach us to follow Jesus. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You fill the earth from tiny grains of wheat to the mighty thunder with your presence. And you call us to attend to your will for all creation. Grant weather that prepares the soil for seeds. Protect all from violent storms, flooding, and wildfires. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. You promise to write your, own, your law on our hearts. Guide citizens throughout the world to shape communities that reflect your mercy, justice, and peace. And give them creativity to work for the welfare of all. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We mourn the multitudes who have died of COVID-19, and we pray for all those who have tested positive for COVID-19 in the last week. Encourage us as we continue to take precautions out of love for friend and neighbor as we await vaccination and a cure. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy 
is great. We pray for all those things for which we have gratitude and are thankful. Let's take a moment to type our gratitudes in the comments section. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. We pray for all those things for which we have concerns and weigh heavily upon us. Let's take a moment to type our concerns in the comment section. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. You sustain us with your bountiful spirit. Restore the joy of all who need to know your presence. Those who are lonely or feel unforgivable. Those who need healing of mind or body. We pray by name for Marion, Marcia, Nancy, Denny, George, Linda, Lynn, Warren, Sue, Ed, Sherry and Jay, Kevin and Rosen family, as well as those listed in the, on the prayer list, typed in the comment section, and remembered in our hearts. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. In the cross of Christ, your name is glorified. With all those who have died in Christ, bring us into life everlasting. Comfort the family and friends who grieve the death of Laverne Nagel, Mary Nelson, Oren Cario, Pat Moseman, Ethel Howry, Della Farley, and Peg Pender. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. We entrust ourselves and our prayers to you, O faithful God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's share a sign of peace with one another. There are a few ways that we can do that. Uh, you know uh, that you can share the peace with those you are gathered with. Uh, you can also share the peace uh, with those who are also watching this service uh, in the comments section connected to this video. And of course, uh, you can use technology to share the peace uh, with those far and wide, uh, people that you may not have the opportunity to visit with all that often, but people who will surely benefit from a message of peace. Uh, peace, you may remember uh, in Scripture, is the image of all things coming together as a whole, as they should be for the goodness of God and for the glory of God. And so, you know, there are things that are out of balance in our world. Uh, there are uh, moments and uh, situations where people don't have uh, what they need to survive and need to flourish. What peace brings is an opportunity to realize how things can be leveled out and brought back into balance again. Every opportunity we have to bear witness to the world is an opportunity to bear witness to peace. Uh, the world as it should be, all things coming together for good. And so I hope that you live into that this week, uh, seeing the world as it could be, as it should be, and sharing that peace with all you encounter. We also have the invitation in this moment to consider our offerings to God, uh, not only what we have, but who we are. Uh, continue to carry that message of peace into the world. Let that be an offering of your very life. Uh, every moment, uh, every instance, every circumstance can be a moment that bears peace. So just continue bearing peace into the world in Jesus' name. You also know, though, that uh, the resources that we gather together and pool together in God's name can do amazing things. Uh, for one, uh, this congregation uh, has been a gift not only of all of our lives, but also all of our resources uh, for many, many years. And 
that good gift continues now. Uh, the gifts you give help the gospel of Jesus Christ be proclaimed in our communities and further. The gifts you give uh, help to uh, fund ministries uh, that serve uh, people in the neighborhood and other organizations throughout Des Moines and beyond. The gifts you give help to purchase meals for backpack buddies. The gifts you give uh, help to do so much. And so we are invited to generosity. We are invited to see what we have uh, as something that is the opportunity to be shared by all. And so as you consider your offering, consider who you are and what you have as uh, potential to change the world and be a part of the mission of God. Let's take time to pray over that and consider it now. Let us pray. Faithful God, you walk beside us in desert places and you meet us in our hunger with bread from heaven. Accompany us in this meal that we may pass over from death to life with Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Receive the bread with these words, the body of Christ given for you. And receive the wine or grape juice with these words, the blood of Christ shed for you. If you're giving or receiving a blessing, these are reliable words. Remember that Jesus loves you no matter what. The table is set. Christ is our host. Come as you are. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Let us pray. God of steadfast love, at this table you gather your people into one body for the sake of the world. Send us in power of your spirit, inspired by the gifts of baptism, that we may live among God's faithful people Hear the word of God and share in the Lord's Supper. Proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and deed. Serve all people following the example of Jesus and strive for justice and peace in all the world. Amen. Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.
We are children of God, led each day to love and serve all people. We are called by Christ to live every day as disciples so that all people will know Christ's love. So as disciples, let's go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. And let's all God's people say, Amen.
change. 